If you want to be successful as a landscape photographer, the one thing you need to do is start observing the skies. The sky is absolutely everything when it comes to light, especially sunrises and sunsets. So one of the things that we seem to enjoy as landscape photographers is colorful skies. I do too, right? What are we looking for in that scenario? Well, the recipe, guys, is right here. Perfect scenario. A sky full of cloud, and then the important factor near the horizon. We can't really see here where the mountains are, but if we look a bit further south, there's an opening of no cloud. And that means as the sun descends, coming into sunset, it will be unblocked by that cloud into that opening, and its light is just gonna hit the underside of the high cloud so they, therefore we're generally wanting medium to high cloud it's high enough so the sun can get below and then light it all up so we are probably 15 minutes away here from the sunset i've come down to the lake and i've purposely come to a section of the lake where it's quite minimal when you do have an epic sky that is completely full of cloud you want to make sure that you're getting all that in there so i'm not going to be going for a zoomed mid-lens shot or a telephoto shot yes that's better for the mountains to make them look larger but for today this is about let's just show some glory to that sky i've come down to the lake to get the reflection of the colors and if anything just to add some depth to the frame i'm going to try and incorporate some of the plant life some of the ferns okay so let's see what we can do look at the light now it's already beautiful golden light the water is calm I was actually out on the water not that long ago on the boat and I probably should have stayed out there to be honest, but anyway. So you got to start to envision the color. It's going to help with the composition. So we're going to be going wide. Look at that sky. So nice and wide here. This is just all about bang, just one of those real epic ones that pretty much looks fake. Now, if we can get some of these little ferns, the bracken ferns, that could work really well pushing forward into that background. There's absolutely nothing on this shoreline to use. Now, why do we want foreground anyway? Well, it just gives a sense of depth. I really typically like to add something near to the viewer as well as everything off in the distance. It's just how you really create that three-dimensionality in your images. And you've probably heard, about, heard me speak about that before. We've got a lot to work with here. The challenge is it's quite messy. But let me show you what I mean about incorporating the near and far so you can see the shoreline and then if we come around like this and included some of the greens see what that does there it just really gives that sense of depth because now you've got something close that rolls onto something further away and then progressively goes on into the distance see these bracken ferns they're all clean and green and going in behind them the pre-visualization is everything i'm going to drop the bag now you got to pre-visualize how would the scene look if you were standing in a different position looking back that way. So try and pre-visualize how would it look with them in the front going through. Now the color will get better as the sun gets lower and lower and lower. The closer the sun is to the horizon, the more color that you're going to get. And when the cloud is really high, it will hold on to the color for a long time. So don't make the mistake, which I have in the past, or packing up and leaving and thinking the show's over. When that high cloud is really high up, the sun has to be incredibly low, below the horizon. As the sun gets lower, its rays of light get higher, 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 higher. So that high cloud will always catch the light very last. All right, I'm gonna get the wide angle out. I can start pre-visualizing the scene. Oh, look at that beam of light and give some good depth on the mountains. It's all about what's over here. I'm not worried about behind us. Okay, look at these little guys. Let's have a look. Ah, that tree's in the way. It's a shame about that tree there. See, it's blocking the peaks. That's why I think we might have to walk around. Now, you might feel yourself getting a bit panicked uh, when you know the light is going to be epic. Slow yourself down and remind yourself the fact that you only need one nice photo. That's all you need. So if you only need one, it's not worth panicking about. There's no point getting worked up and overwhelmed and taking 20 average compositions 
just one. And that's what I'm in the hunt for now. Just where is the comp? These, it's amazing. There's so many plants here, but so messy at the same time. It's, uh, got to admit, it's a little bit frustrating. So I'm just kind of exploring, sticking up too high. It's hitting the background. Not good. You need clear separation from foreground, then the midground, background. If that foreground object hits that background, you just really flatten out the scene, which is the opposite of what we want to do. This is roughly what I'm working with at the moment and just experimenting different frames here vertical now one of the challenges you'll face when you're incorporating some foreground matter is if you get so close it's a huge depth of field so you have to close the f-stop down f11 f16 um, or if you're extremely close like I am you'll have to focus stack so a series of exposures progressively focusing from the front through to the back and then that has to get blended later in the computer um, and that's the only way you can get the whole frame sharp well there's a bit of color there it's about to really explode um, I'm gonna keep this in the memory bank and just see if there's anything a little bit better otherwise we'll just run back to that spot that's how I like to work. I don't just like sitting on the one thing for the whole time. It's nice to capture the local area, which is something I obviously do a lot, but it doesn't make up. Most of my work is further afield out there. So it's nice to get something that's really close to home base. Wow, look at it go now. I've zoomed in at 24 mil. And that's helped compress that background so it's not so small and then I just come back slightly so I can still fit those ferns in and when it comes to exposure I just expose for the sky so I'm not losing those highlights because the shadow recovery on these cameras is just so good that we lift those shadows up later on let's mix up the comp now and get that driftwood take advantage of that color Let's use this, uh, well it's not driftwood, it's a, it's a huge dead tree, but let's see what we can do here with this. Nice textures in the timber. It's not really flowing towards the light, but still, that's really nice. And we don't have to worry about what do we like better. You do that when you get home. Let's do one at 21 mil, just pulling it all in. Now we don't want to sit on this uh, dead tree for too long. It's going to drop off now, I can see it dropping off. One last potential comp before the light completely fades out. What are we going to do? What about super simple? right down the front and we'll get these pebbles there is some stones up there can we make that in time let's try just there's some rocks in the water Man. it's in these moments when i wonder did i leave the car keys in my pocket and they've just bounced out here we go Look at that sky. With the color, the richest color will be towards the source of the sun. It's still beautiful up north, but then when you go west, it's got that really strong light. Three rocks here. Uh, they're not really spaced very well, but anyway. Smaller stones up here. Those ones were just clumped in the center there bit like a roadblock the eye it was a bit hard to travel past that here we go let's try that that's better 
These have a small opening between them. I'll try, I'll get down low. So there's not too much mid ground. And picking up the, the rocks in front of me, then the rocks in the water. Just trying to find that right. The right uh, focal length. And a slow shutter, so I'm at half a second. Got down low to close that mid ground in, otherwise there's just a lot of open water out there with not much going on. 0.4 seconds, I don't want to go longer than that. I, I could, but we lose too much of the water texture. In an ideal world, we would have had some crashing waves, but it wasn't meant to be. See the colour now is really firing up. And that's what I was talking about when I said about uh, the high cloud will blow up last. Oh, I don't like that rock to be honest. I don't think it's just sticking up a little bit obnoxiously. Let's have a look up here. Back to the focus stacking. Look at that. This is a nice little section here. We found it right on time. Sometimes, well most of the time, I just like to operate in the, the heat of the moment. I guess it makes it more fun. It's balancing that focal length. What's too wide and what's not wide enough. Now I don't like focus stacking, it's just a necessary tool to if I want to get super close like that, it's just how it is. A single shot's obviously going to be better, less processing. So I focus on that immediate foreground, and then it progresses its, expo its focus points all the way through. Look at it go. Look at it go. Try to get a helicopter this afternoon to be honest but the boys had just finished and cracked open a beer because uh, i could see this was coming this is not a bad uh consolation though i'm just glad to be out here that'll be about it it's just gonna start fading out oh how fun i love just getting in the flow state and not overly thinking just shooting away and then at home is when you decide which is your favourite, but I like to just keep mixing it up while I'm out here. All right, we're just gonna have a quick look at the images. I've got a handful here. I'll talk about the ones I don't like and then the one that I'll end up keeping. This one here, first and foremost, the reason why I wouldn't keep this one, and I mentioned this out in the field, is because of the big tree up in that right hand corner so that's just something to keep an eye on when you have these foreground or even the midground elements jumping up and hitting that background it just really flattens the scene out it, it loses that sense of depth there's no more separation we really want to see defined zones which aren't overlapping now sometimes we can do that on purpose if we're having a natural frame or something like that but in this case, and especially because there's nothing on this left side, it, it's incredibly unbalanced, it becomes distracting. And like I said, it just kind of loses the whole point of having this foreground is to get that separation. So definitely wasn't keen on that composition. And that was one of the main challenges I was having out there on the beach was every time I jumped into the plants, there was often something on that right hand side. And that was the hard thing with shooting horizontally like this and using the wide angle. This was the frame with the logs and you know we've got the separation here you can see the logs finish then we've got the shore the water so that's all fine however i just feel like these are just so kind of barren and don't really add anything interesting to the frame it's just not really nice subject matter so for that reason i just wouldn't end up keeping these frames but when you see stuff like this in the field, it's just worth shooting, not messing around, get the shot and then move on. And when you're at home, this is when you can really reflect on everything and decide. And yeah, definitely I think as I was shooting that, I was like, oh, you know, it's nice texture and everything. I like how the lights on the timber, but it just doesn't compare to the vibrancy and the life that is found in the plants that I was using.
Now, this one here is definitely getting in the ballpark of what I liked. It's a bit tricky because the foreground was certainly going up and hitting the lake there, but at least there was a subtle opening here, which kind of helped reveal the depth and gave the eye a bit of a pathway through to the background. What I don't like about this one is one, I think, yeah, the foreground's just getting a little bit too high up into the lake. But also the light by this stage, this was right towards the end. It's more of a, a neon pinky red that's going on. And personally, I preferred when it was about five minutes earlier when it was quite warm and yellow and orange and less leaning into the red and the pinks. And you'll see in a moment what I mean. But this is certainly, you know, getting in that ballpark of what I would like. But if I got up a little bit higher, then I could have got that separation here between the layers but i'll show you the next frames now before i show you the final one which i like this one was just the example by the water's edge i think in theory this could have worked for sure because you've got the layering of the rocks that have the beautiful reflected light stones to give the sense of depth because they're near elements and then we drift into the far distance where we have the beautiful light I like the slow shutter on the water. It's just like I said out there, the thing that I really let this one down was the imbalance with the stones, just having that large one on the left. It just kind of stands out to me. It needs to be balanced out in a better way. I don't like how it's just one, two, and then one. It would have been way more effective if I could have found maybe one, two, and then there'll be that flow through the center between them. Or even having that third one, maybe just smaller, out off in the distance and as i'm saying that you could actually probably using photoshop kind of move that over there i just wouldn't bother doing that to be honest if you're determined though you could probably realign it but not worth it in this case but yeah the the, the way these are aligned is just doesn't flow very well the, yeah ideally if you had to have three like i said one two and then the one back here that would help the eye just gently ease through the frame that it just wasn't meant to be. Otherwise, yeah, I don't mind the, the real simple um, composition of just shooting the water with the lake there, the slow shutter, but the stones are kind of critical. You envision this without these stones, too boring in my opinion, for me anyway, um, it's a subjective. I could have just stepped aside, not had these stones at all and just went pebbles flowing into the water, but I did like having those larger elements. It just wasn't meant to be with the alignment there. So here we go, this is the one that I'll actually keep and put in the portfolio. It's kind of a combination of everything we're talking about. We've got the somewhat slow shuttered water in the background, the foreground with the nice plant life and a variety of plants too, the ferns, these other leaves in there, and then pretty close, but we've just got enough separation so you can see the shoreline running along. We don't really have too many greens coming up and hitting the lake. And that's the light that I enjoy. See how we've got that glowy, warm light, and then it's a, a gradual tonal shift from the yellows and oranges, and then a tiny bit of pink and red up the top. And of course, all the light reflected on the water. Um, this is the final one. And I even like in the background, the way that the arm was framing up, this was in most of the shots, but this is what I said out there. Everything was tapering and flowing down. So that kind of leads the eye through into that center point. How could it be better? Well, if it was winter, because then all these peaks would just have that layering of snow and they'd be a bit more defined. But otherwise, yeah, I'm happy with this. It was just a beautiful sunset and a nice to just get something, like I said, close to home. And I think at this point in time, this is probably one of my, you know, better photos of the local area. The light, it's done all the work, but it's also about what I call the four pillars. You've got to have location, then a good composition, good light, and then process it as well. So there we go guys, capturing sunset, keep an eye on those skies, look for those clouds and then look for that opening on your horizon.